probably lock the door from the kids coming in too. Mm -hmm. I hear their little feet right now. <laughs> hey everybody, we are doing live Q and I with Aaron. Uh, Aaron's my go-to with uh, with solar. Definitely one of the most intelligent guys when it comes to this, and a lot of people that I know in school buses. And we have one of his uh, one of his youngins in here right now. But I'm going to be over on the laptop, uh, basically feeding him questions from all of you, so he can just concentrate on answers. Go ahead and leave those in the comments over here, and you can go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Sure. And then we'll go from there. Hey, I'm Aaron Brockley from uh, Brockley Bus 6 is our Instagram and kind of bus name. And that'll be, and, linked, uh, down that'll be linked down below. Uh, I heard through the grapevine that there was a bunch of folks that wanted to maybe meet me a little bit more and ask solar questions or other technical things going on there and, and whatever else uh, sounds interesting. So, so um, I had them write some questions below saying that we're doing the live Q&A today. And Tiffany W. asks, how do you know how many panels you need to run various things? Can you go fully solar and still have TV and computer? Yeah, you can absolutely go full solar and have TV and computer. Um, I think one of the things I tell everybody that asks about how to do this is uh, to go ahead and try to figure out what your loads are first before you dive into how to make that get solved. So, um, yeah, basically, I find that a lot of people fixate on what inverter, what solar, what batteries, and everything else first before they even figure out what they're trying to do or what it really is, what it takes. So, in those cases, you got to really reverse it around and figure out what you need instead and then work back. Um, I think that what happens is people often overshoot or undershoot their, uh, their, their needs. So, um, as an example, you know, in the winter time, we're kind of on the cusp of, of, uh, we're fine, but we're, you can see we're on the thin margin for, for power consumption. In the summertime, we have an abundance of power until we're running air conditioner at which point we're right back to the thin margin again. So it's, you know, it's you can adjust that situation somewhat with where you're at and if you're mobile and, and how you're parked and things like that. So next question comes from Jenna. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to go fully solar? A uh, little quote here. I'm from Canada with, with sun that's very seasonal. How many panels, what cost would it require? So basically... You know, if, if someone was up in Canada where the summers are just killer, but winters are going to be pretty yeah. tough. I mean, it, it almost seems like that's more of a getting a generator for winter situation. It's tricky because what happens when the snow's on there? You're going to get up there every day and scrape the snow off. You know, uh, panels do work under a very, very thin dusting of snow, but it's like having dirt up there. It's almost immediately cut down to very little to none. Um, of course, you know, in the, in the wintertime, your, your sun comes in at a much uh, shallower angle. So maybe having your panels almost near vertical, as the, the more latitude you have, the less snow sticks to them, of course. But even a snow drift on one edge of it at the bottom will, will potentially stop that panel from producing. I think uh, if you're in the Great White North in the summertime, it's fantastic. But the wintertime, you're going to have to have uh, some other production way to produce power. I've, I've noticed a lot of folks uh, have done micro turbines for water. So if you're fixed in a place, uh, you can use water. But if it freezes, then that's not moving either. So it's tricky. Uh, Poo AV44, do you need to clean the panels like in snow? You kind of answered that, but can you kind of touch base on uh, how much maintenance those panels typically require in terms of cleaning? I have to clean my panels every week at least. Um, mine are sitting flat due to design considerations that I chose. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks around here out in the court site. They, uh, they seem to angle there, so they're probably a lot cleaner. Even Chris, your panels stay a lot cleaner a lot more than mine do. Yeah, so my panels, I have two that lay flat, and I have uh, eight additional panels that are at an angle. And the difference, like typically I don't have to clean the panels on the side. Yeah. It's always the flat panels that get a bunch of gunk on them. I have to right. clean them. Right, so I, I just dust them off usually, and then if the dust starts to stick, I, I use a Swiffer pad on a really long stick. 
And then, then everybody in the bus is complaining that the bus is shaking because I'm sitting there scraping the dust off of them. Uh, Jen Molly asks, um, and I'll paraphrase here, uh, can solar power a girly girl house? So she's talking about, you know, hair dryers, uh, flat iron, curling iron. Uh, so concerned about that. That was solar setup. Why I built my solar system huge. That's exactly why I've got five girls and one boy or four girls. No. Oh my gosh. I can't even count my wife, three daughters, four girls must be early. Um, hair curler, hair flattener, hair dryer, uh, lots of lights, all that stuff. Um, so that all runs fine. Plus toaster. So usually it's hair dryer, toaster, hair flattener, uh, and coffee machine all running at the same time in the morning is usually what's going on. Gotcha. Uh, Devin asks, <clears throat> how much was the whole project? So I'm assuming they're asking, or Devin's asking, and this is part of the Q&A section here. Yeah. Um, basically, how much did it cost to get your solar system set up? A lot. Uh <laughs> I think I alluded to that in some in one of the other videos that uh, sparked a lot of uh, interesting responses. Um, the The thing is, is that the solar panels technically were the cheapest part of my system. Um, solar panels nowadays for large ones can be had secondhand or from removed projects for pretty cheap. I've seen them. There's a place called Santan Solar that's in uh, in Arizona, either in Gilbert actually or Santan. Anyway. Uh, Seen panels for about a hundred dollars a panel for uh, three hundred watt panels. They have them off and on. That's an amazing price for panels. They got to remember they're pretty big though, um, so you got to have the space to put them up there. So uh, Mike G, uh, he's been watching my videos for a while. He asks, "Do I have to change my charge controller if I get lithium batteries? I have an Outback Outback Flex sixty with four hundred watts of solar." Uh, it's likely that you can just program it for the different charge curve. I think the Outbacks are uh, relatively flexible and you can set the charge pro profile however you need to. you got to remember that um, lithium batteries don't really have a... Uh, um, they kind of just go under bulk charge and all the way up and then there's no absorb really you need. So you just bulk and then float basically is what you do for lithium batteries. Um, just make sure that you're setting, you're able to set the voltage correct. Like if you're using those Battleborn batteries, um, they like to be charging around 14.2 to 14.4 volts, and they're considered full around 13.6. Um, you just need to check the spec on the battery, basically. So, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, Mude, I bought a fire. Let's see if it's turning yellow and green. There we go. Are we back? Uh, I got the little spinny circle on the YouTube video here, but it looks like your uh, other tool is broadcasting. He's spinny. He's. I just begin to refresh this guy. Uh, I, don't I know what you know. can do. Let's see, it says unable to connect, so I think we're. Oh, look, there's, there's one. Mm -hmm. Try reconnecting here. Because mine is not connecting. Yeah, let's just see what happens here. Are you getting the video on yours too? Yeah. That might be what kills it. Do you have just the same view on yours? Looks like we're back. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're having some internet issues out here in the middle of the desert working remotely. There's several other people that are out near us that probably are all watching uh, Sunday morning Netflix cartoons or something, right? Yep. Hey, Juan, I saw you say hi. Flip through there really fast. Maybe you're, maybe you're still connected. So, let me go back up here. We had a bunch of questions while we were out. All right. I got all the questions now. Uh, if someone retired and has 25k but wants to live that lifestyle, where's the best place they could go to get something set up? Also, with no special driver's license. So let's just keep that on solar. Like if somebody yeah. had 25k, so they're talking about a rig and 25k. What would you suggest to them? Uh, there's some of the 
reputable uh, solar installers. Um, honestly, um, one that comes to mind, and I'm not trying to rep anybody in particular, but AM Solar up in Oregon, um, they seem to know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, they, they charge appropriately, um, but uh, they'd probably be able to fix you up pretty good. I really like them a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of people been looking through the questions, but everybody's saying the internet's not working. I'm like, yeah. Yep. I know. <laughs> I could scroll back maybe too. Let's see. Derek asks, where are you guys at today? We're in uh, outside of Quartzsite, Arizona. Okay. I, I see a good question here yeah. from Derek Campbell. Is it possible to shortcut need calculations using your monthly draw? We use about 125 kilowatt hours a month. We run our house fully off a of 15 amp circuit. Uh, 125 kilowatt hours a month is a hell of a lot of power uh, still. So, you know, if that 15 amp circuit is loaded most of the time, you need to figure out why it's doing that. Um, our house, house, when it's idle, uh, we're pulling about. Uh, about 80 watts in idle mode um, at nighttime, usually when everything's quiet. So that's usually the internet is still connected, the fridge runs off and on. So whatever whatever that is in watt hours, you know, times the nighttime. Um, I think you still would get, I think this applies for anybody who's doing energy audit. Uh, one of those little plug-in boxes on Amazon, they're called kill a watt. Plug that in between the, the outlet and the device you want to measure measure it for a 24 hour period of time, go to the next thing, um, or plug in several things if you want. And that's a great way to understand how much power usage you have and where you can, you can reduce things. So here's a, this is one of the preloaded questions. Uh, this comes from John. What kind of solar panels did you use? And do you have a list of what you used for your whole solar project for your schoolie? I'm building one myself and looking for info. So basically, that's more directed to you. Like, do you have a list on a website or a blog article of all the components that you use? I don't have an itemized list, but you should check out our blog, broccolibus.com. And uh, there's a whole bunch of posts going through all the trouble of everything. It's not just the power system. It's the whole bus build. Um, I probably would come up with a higher level list of, of itemized things. I kind of... Uh, try to avoid posting that because I think each power system is, un is unique to each individual and group's needs of uh, things. So if you just copied it, it would work, but I think you would have overspent a lot if you only got one or two people in your, in your, in your RV living with you. So, or if you're a family of 10, it might be totally different as well. So, um, however, the solar panels, I like, like I mentioned earlier, they came from Santan Solar. I bought them off of eBay and they got shipped via freight to where I lived. And I think I paid about, uh, including shipping about $1,500 for, for eight solar panels, eight, 325 watt panels. So wild man asks, uh, people are selling 48 kilowatt packages on eBay. Are those worth a flip? Would it be better to go ahead and buy a full battery pack and build your own like you did? Um, I'm assuming packages means like a full deal with solar and everything. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. I've never really looked at them. Um, I would assume that if the components are, are of known pedigree, like, you know, maybe some of the, the, the bigger names there, um, if it includes a lot of the large components, I think it's probably worth looking into. Um, you know, I think that building your own battery pack has, has got its positives and negatives, no pun intended. Um, so, you know, I've had a battery pack problem when I first started out. And what it was is that I followed the torque set, the torque specifications for Nissan Leaf uh, modules as they were supposed to be torqued with the original bus bars, which are these really thin copper plates. And when you use the thicker bus bars for the lower voltage, higher amperage situation that's in the battery pack, they back themselves out. So um, if suddenly your battery doesn't work one day and it was fine the day before, you need to know how to diagnose everything inside of that battery because you are your own warranty support. Um, I had uh, Joey asked a question do you run your AC unit off of your inverter? I 
do. So I have two inverters that are configured to set up their, they're in a what's called a virtual group. Um, it's two 120 volt inverters. They have a data cable connecting between the two of them and they're configured to work in a 180 degree split phase operation, which is a standard North American voltage setup like any house is. So you have 120 volts, 120 volts, and 240 between the two. So our uh, air conditioner connects to both to get the 240 volts. And Wildman clarified, he's talking about buying leaf batteries off of eBay, the 48 kilowatt leaf batteries. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think that if the price is right, you should go for it. Um, I bought mine from uh, a sal Auto Salvage, and I had to call around a bit to find a low mileage vehicle. Um, they were able to send me information showing a picture of the dash before they ripped it all apart that showed all of the the, the capacity bars or whatever they call those on the on the leaf uh, uh, dashboard and the vehicle had under 30,000 miles and were gen 2 batteries so I was able to confirm all that because of the year and the VIN and all that other stuff so I got a really good deal on that um, if someone's already taken them apart I would expect to have them send you the entire pack or potentially at least all the bits that came off the battery because all those little pieces are really useful for assembling your own bus bars and and all sorts of stuff, just to see how they're all assembled and, and connected. You should throw that disclaimer in there that you're not a, uh, you're, you you play a professional yeah. on TV. I right? might sound like a professional, like one of those guys, it's those doctors on uh, TV, but I am, I'm unqualified to do anything. I'm qualified to drink a cup of coffee, <laughs> and that's about it, but I may have done this once or twice now, so, so he should, give advice. So he should you should hire a professional. Yes. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> cover all the bases yeah uh rv chillin she is in west marfa just bought a short bus and looking for help with build and install of roof rack and installing solar anyone in the known area so obviously we might not know somebody there but if somebody was looking for help what's some of the criteria that they should be looking for say they have a tiny home or a rig and yeah like is there any telltale signs of a good shop, bad shop, reviews, anything along those lines? I think any type of shop that's got a doing, doing a lot of volume probably isn't going to have time for you. That's my guess. Um, if it's a lot, if it's a big truck shop doing custom stuff, you might pay big custom prices. Uh, if it's um, a place, if you were to talk to them and, and ask, how would you connect? Uh, if you had a bus, like, like, like if, I'm assuming short bus, it's like steel roof short bus. Um, if you were just to have a quick conversation, say, how would you attach something to the roof of my steel body bus? And they said glue and screws or something like that, or, oh, I don't know, I'd have to figure it out. You may want to keep looking. Um, someone that might say, well, I'd have to make some hard points and blah, 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 and, and gave you a clear description of what they were doing right off the bat without having to come back. Um, I think that might be someone to investigate further. Derek asks another question. Could you give us a brief rundown of your personal system? Sure. So I have a 24 kilowatt Nissan Leaf pack. Uh, it's been derated to about 20 usable. That means that I've reduced the, the max discharge and max charge voltage of those cells. That's setting up set up to run in a 48 volt nominal system, which is actually like 56 volts when it's full charge or 57. It then connects to two Victron inverters that are three KVA inverters. And so they are uh, providing split phase power to a, a breaker panel. The solar controller is a 250 uh, volt, 70 amp controller, maybe 60. And so that's pulling two, two arrays of panels on the roof. So each of those arrays is four panels and then another four panels um, in series, and then those are then parallel to the panel. So the nominal voltage of my solar is about 150 volts, and um, that's all integrated with a Victron unit there to the Venus GX. Uh, that's really about it. Then I have a DC distribution panel with some DC converters to take the 48 volts down to 12 volts. That powers all the RV things. So Alan asks, he has a 200 watt solar panel at Zamp. It needs to be repaired. It needs a new plug. Where's the best place to go to get that fixed? Uh, if it's just the end of the cable that's bad, 
uh, Zamp connectors, I think they're just like stand, there's a name for them that's like, they're kind of an elbow shaped looking plastic deal with one pins exposed and one pins recessed. That's a standard like automotive connector. You probably can just uh, get a replacement pigtail on, on Amazon. Um, barring that, uh, any type of automotive electrician or RV electrician place should be able to clip and replace that, that end on there. Yeah, it seems pretty, uh, pretty simple. Jess yeah. asks, what hot water heater do you recommend for off-gridders? Uh, one that doesn't consume a lot of power, right, <laughs> Chris? <laughs> uh, yeah. If you've got, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna be generic and specific at the same time. Remember to design for what you need and not what you uh, hear. So look for the capacity you have. You can totally have a big ass electric hot water heater if you want. If you got tons of solar. Um, if you don't have a lot of solar and you're living on the margin, then you might need a propane or uh, other petrochemical style hot water heater. Um, I My preference has been uh, just because it was easy to install and I did not have to mess with it a lot, was an uh, instant hot water heater that's ran off of propane. Um, in the future, maybe it would be in another vehicle. I do some sort of neat hybrid setup with like the engine coolant circulator and maybe it's electric and propane driven. Uh, there's really, there's this one super fancy expensive hot water heater that has a holding tank and it's instant simultaneously. So you don't get any cold sandwich and it runs uh, uh, instant through it. Uh, it's expensive, but it's also propane driven. And that would be my next choice probably. Michael, can you run solar and use either the vehicle primary alternator or a secondary alternator with solar? Yeah, totally. That's what I did yesterday driving down to Yuma. Uh, power was, you know, charging up for the day. We took the, the bus down there to, to just go for a drive because we, we haven't gone anywhere for a while. And uh, I let the alternator on. I have a second alternator charging the battery pack. At the same time the sun was coming in because it was a bright sunny day. And we got lots of power coming in the whole, t whole time we were driving. Um, might be a little bit of hearsay, but I feel like when we're driving, the panels stay a little cooler, and they're a little more productive when they're cooler with the wind blowing over them too. So, uh, for Beta Mel Two, I would love to have Battleborn lithium-ion batteries, but a thousand dollars a pop. Ouch. Yeah. Can you kind of touch base on pros and cons of Battleborn? Well, let's talk about this. Ten-year warranty, plug-and-play, compatible with existing charge systems. You don't have to replace. There was somebody else who had asked about changing their uh, voltage around for their solar controller. Um, the Battleborns are completely compatible with existing lead acid charge curves. They're just designed to be a plug and drop in replacement. Um, if you were to go get a set of raw uh, lithium battery packs, just pouches or cylinders or whatever thing you want to do, you really need to have some sort of protection on them from thermal to voltage to, you know, all sorts of discharge, all sorts of things. And that adds cost to those. So, um, you know, then there's the packaging on them. Lots of lots of reasons they cost that much. Um, also consider, I think that Battleborn probably built into their cost the fact that you would be replacing a similar size hundred amp hour lead acid battery three or four times potentially over maybe two or three times over the lifetime of that battery's warranty. So that's just what it costs to have a battery that lasts literally ten years and is lithium. Absolutely. So this is one of my questions because we got about five minutes left. Out of all the systems that you've been seeing, what's been some of the biggest misconceptions people going into powering the rig with solar or even getting into solar? Like what's, what's been some of the biggest blunders you've seen people make? Um, I think one of the issues that I've seen that's pretty significant is not selecting a high enough system voltage. Um, I think the higher the system voltage, the smaller your wiring goes. It's a little easier and safer because you're not, I prefer high voltage over high amperage. Um, amperage is really where you get a lot of the fires that can happen. Um, another is uh, counting completely on electrical heating. Uh, I know um, a friend of ours that we met last year, they didn't have anything but a heat pump. And when it got really cold, they were cold and uh, ended up helping them install one of those diesel furnaces that you can get off of uh, Amazon for pretty cheap. And it made a world of difference for comfort for them. Another is hot water heating, Chris. 
Uh, it's effective in the summertime, but as you know, in the wintertime when the days are short and the nights are long, uh, you have to augment that power to be able to, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, finally is uh, my own problem, which has been um, mounting the panels on the roof. Uh, it's been tricky getting them up there and making it work right. I always worry they're flying off. There never are, but I just, I don't know, I'm uncomfortable about that. So um, maybe at some point in the future, I'll redo my panel mounting system a little bit differently. But I'd never done it before, so you know that was how that is. And then uh, I think finally is um, picking components that are not failure prone. Um, if you're depending on this for long term, I've seen a lot of the um, cheaper inverter charger combo systems start to poof out after a while. Sometimes the charger stops working on them and it's a cascading effect of failure because now the charger doesn't work and it's maybe cloudy for a while so you need to plug in but your charger's not working and so now your batteries are declining in power and how do you get that? And so like having a, a failed component can cause a whole bunch of other things to fail including the battery pack. If you damage the battery pack, if you're lead acid, that's even more money you're out. Um, so it's just, you know, it's really about considering your loads and making sure you get good quality components. All right. Rapid fire questions for the last couple of minutes. Sure. Lily Duran asked, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? I don't know. <laughs> Myself? <Ralph Lauren. laughs> uh, Wild Man says... That's a, that's a loaded uh, question. He, uh, he appreciates your answers. Derek asks, since you're not a, quote, professional... Uh, what resources would you recommend for those of us who want to play with this stuff? Favorite sites, books, etc. I'd actually start looking at some of the um, Department of Energy and some of the other uh, government resources to talk about insulation and solar setups and how to do that. Like, look about how you do solar in houses first. But then also you need to look towards the community of people that build them on, on uh, mobile vehicles. I think... The marine people, sailboats, uh, motor yachts, that kind of size, small marine vessels really have a, a, a dialed in really well. And uh, I definitely just, you know, reading a lot of books. I don't have a list of reading in front of me. Maybe I can post something on my blog, uh, broccolibus.com later to get, get you guys going there. Awesome. Last question for the day. Uh, Joey asks, any wind generators to augment your power system do you use slash recommend? Uh, the other day when we were having Thanksgiving and it was like windy as heck outside, I kept looking at those those turbines that were spinning around and Chris were like, hmm, I wonder if those would work pretty good. Uh, I, I think they'd be pretty neat if you're stationary for a while. I think I would get tired of putting it up and taking it down all the time. But if it's wind, that's like free power right there blowing all the time. Okay, very last question. Broccoli Bus 6 asks, what's that behind you, Aaron, on the plate? Oh, this would be banana bread <laughs> made by my wife, who is Broccoli Bus 6, by the way. Let me get this so the light is not there. Oh, wait. I shade it. A little bit more. There back. you go. There you go. Now you can see it. So, these will be sold for nineteen ninety five <laughs> a, a loaf. Palooza. Uh, care of Schooly Palooza. Just come on out and visit us out there, and we'll bill you a lot of money for these solar-powered bread, bread things cooked yeah. with propane. And uh, before you head out, tell people where they can find you. Uh, what uh, what would be the best way for them to look at your stuff and what you guys are up to? Um, I would say right now I've been working hard to get our blog up to up to speed again, and. Uh, Start commenting there and start a dialogue there. I think that would really help me figure out what to talk about next. And if you have questions and things, uh, that's broccoli, broccolibus.com. Um, you can also hit us on Instagram, broccolibus6. And then my personal Instagram is Aaron Bockley. Um, feel free to ask questions there. I may redirect some of that stuff over to our blog. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. I did a test stream one time, and maybe I'll start doing some more if, if uh, people are interested in asking more questions there. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for.